Welcome to Life in the Library with your hosts, Cheyenne and Sam. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Life in the Library. I'm your host, Sam, and today we're going to jump into some books. Do you want to tell us about coffee beans? Yeah, totally. So the book that I have today is obviously called The Coffee Bean, like Sam already stated. Um, The authors are John Gordon and Damon West, and this book actually came from Sherry McKnight's personal library here at Big Daddy Unlimited. And oh my gosh, when she handed me this book, I did not expect her to slap me in the face (laughs) with a life (laughs) lesson, y'all. Because when Sam and I were originally talking about this episode and what we wanted to do with this episode, we decided that we would have our first books be something that we're passionate about. And obviously, as you guys know by now, I'm very passionate about coffee. But I did not expect the coffee bean book to be a life lesson. I expected it to be about like how coffee beans were roasted or where they come from or something of that nature. But the Coffee Bean book will now be one of my favorite books to refer to when being asked for a life lesson or advice from youth or just anyone really in general. And I'm going to tell you why. This book starts off by painting a scene of a young high school student named Abe who's super stressed and anxious beyond belief about life, the pressures of school. (laughs) Yeah, right? Sounds like a lot of us. The pressures of school and negativity on social media. Which honestly sounds a lot like me in high school and kind of me now. (laughs) (laughs) Same. The only difference between Abe and I is that he isn't as stubborn and and he has an amazing teacher named Mr. Jackson who took the time to actually realize he was acting off in class and decided to use that as an opportunity to sow into his life. So after class one day, Mr. Jackson pulled Abe aside and asked what was going on in his life. Which, honestly, shout out to all the amazing teachers that genuinely care about the mental health of their students. Because Lord knows if it wasn't one of, if, like, if it wasn't for one of my high school teachers named Mr. Reedway, who let me just, like, chill in the back of his room and read while listening to music when I got stressed out, I probably would not have stayed in school as long as I did. So, Mr. Reedway, if you're listening to this, thanks, man. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Jackson used science experiments with a carrot, an egg, and a coffee bean to help Abe understand how to get through the pressures of life without allowing them to become overwhelming and consume him. So it's really interesting to me how the authors John and Damon use these illustrations to relate to common issues that everyone has, not just high school students. Like the issues and topics that they touch on in these books that are illustrated by the carrot, the egg, and the coffee bean are issues that range in age from anyone in, like, late middle school age to 80. (laughs) Like, there's no age limit. So that's part of the reason that I love this book so much. Not only is it a book that I truly believe that youth can benefit from, having being added to a mandatory summer reading list, but it's also a book for people like me who didn't really have someone in their youth to notice when they weren't doing well mentally. Like, it's very rare to come across someone in your young adult high school life that Mm. genuinely cares about what's going on outside of school. Like, Yeah. I would say I had one teacher. Yeah. And that was Miss Burkett, my act teacher. Exactly. Like, I only had one teacher, too, out of, what, seven classes? Yeah. That genuinely cared. Like, that would see his students sitting off in a corner, like, you know, the high school sluggishness that you get when life just affects you. And he would let you go chill, or he'd take the time to ask you what's going on. And that's exactly what Mr. Jackson did in this book. Mm -hmm. So, again, just shout out to those (laughs) teachers, because teachers do not get enough credit. So, even as an adult, this book taught me things that I didn't even know I needed to be taught. So, also, thanks to Miss McKnight for unknowingly being my Mr. Jackson. (laughs) (laughs) It's really hard for me to go into details about this book without spoiling it all together just because of how much I genuinely enjoyed this read but also because it's a short book which is a bonus for someone that doesn't have a lot of time to read so it would seriously only take you half a day to read this book and I think it's only really a as big as it is because of the cute little pictures from the book's illustrator Rachel Kim like all throughout this book there's pictures on each and every page and there might be like one little baby paragraph above the picture and one little baby paragraph under the picture So without the pictures, the book may only be like two chapters. (laughs) 
So if you're someone that doesn't have a lot of time to read, but you love to read, this book is literally for you. I'm not typically someone to pick apart the construction of a book, but the way that the authors and illustrators came together to relay this amazing lesson was something very refreshing to me that I honestly haven't seen in a book in a really long time. And because of the message that Abe received from Mr. Jackson and the coffee bean, Abe actually goes on to do some pretty incredible things throughout his life. And I really believe that if the things in this book were applied to the lives of today's youth, or to me when I was a high school student, we would be in a much better place in society as a whole, which saying a lot coming from such a tiny book. Yeah. Anyways, I could probably ramble about this book alone for hours. <laughs> so I'm going to end my little book rant with a fun fact about coffee. Because again, if you know anything about me from listening to our podcast so far, you'll know that coffee is part of my love language. <laughs> so drinking coffee was once punishable by death. It's so funny that you just said coffee was your love language because I totally made a tweet today that said, what's your love language? Zach Bryan. (laughs) I love how your love language is an artist and mine's a drink. Listen, this man makes all my anger go away. (laughs) You put Zach Bryan on and I'm just like, "Ah, ah, I'm in love. (laughs) Do you actually know what your love language is? Yeah, quality time. Oh, nice. Mine is acts of service Mm -hmm. and gift giving. Yeah, that gives me anxiety. <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Because when it, comes, when it comes time to give gifts, everyone that I know, like I know you through and through, <laughs> but the minute it comes time to give you a gift, I'm like, I don't know her. <laughs> I know nothing this about her. This person is a stranger. I've never met her a day in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, here's this cute little elephant thing. I'll get it for her. And I'll, like, I'll hand it to you. And I'm like, she's going to hate it. She's going to hate me. She's going to think I don't know her. Literally, trauma. I still have, oh my god, I still have the little elephant thumb ring that you gave me in what, like high school? Yes. Aww, thanks. So cute. Not curing my anxiety, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Anyway, so drinking coffee was once punishable by death. In the 17th century, Ottoman Empire, I believe is how you say it. We're just going to roll with it. <laughs> it was believed that coffee contained mind-altering effects. That's that caffeine, baby. Yes. <laughs> So, the ruler of this period believed it to be a type of narcotic oh. and banned it from public consumption. I personally am very happy that it is no longer the case that it's punishable by death um, because I'm pretty sure I'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and all my coffee drinkers out there would probably agree with me. So, thanks, uh, the Ottoman Empire, for not sticking around with that punishable by death <laughs> rule because that would have sucked. Yeah. I actually really don't know what you're talking about today, Sam, so how about you just tell us? Today, I am talking about the book called The Almost Zero Waste Guide by Melanie Manorino. It was published in 2021, and you can purchase this book for $15.99, or just go get it at your local library. Whoop whoop! We love a library save. So I hope you're prepared to be shocked by some of the things that I talk about. (laughs) (laughs) But before we jump in, I'm going to say that this book provides 100 plus tips on how to be almost zero waste, but I'm only going to touch on the ones that piqued my interest or some that I'm already implementing into my home. There's a sentence in this book that really stood out to me. The fewer items you bring in your life, the less energy you spend trying to dispose of them. Ooh, that's good. Literally, because I'm trying to like throw everything out of yeah, my house. Yeah, or sell everything. Yeah. If you look at it that way, you won't want to bring those unnecessary items into your home. As you've seen. I'm going to do clutter face. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> And I am totally refusing to bring any unneeded items into my home. I told Cheyenne that since this is our first book episode and that I'm talking about zero waste and that we have to strive to be better. So I refuse to let her have plastic. Yeah. Like anytime I go buy anything plastic, I'm like, oh my gosh, Sam would kill me. I have to put it back (laughs) or have to find something that's like a better alternative because I'm proud of you. She bought a silicone phone case today. I really love coffee cups, um, like the Starbucks coffee cups, but I stopped buying them because you got mad that they were plastic. So <laughs> Sam bought me this like eco-friendly. It's bit, recycled plastic. Recycled so it's still plastic. plastic. But instead of those two water bottles being thrown into a landfill, which I will touch on, 
they were just made into another cute cup right and that's what i was gonna say like that's easier for me because obviously i'm not at the point in my life that you're in where i'm willing to make those big sacrifices (laughs) but i'm still able to make small steps that are better yes so i'll help you (laughs) be my mentor (laughs) (laughs) well some of the simplest ways to start being zero waste is not using plastic straws and utensils yeah i found well, I think I told you the the straws that are made out of what are they made out of? They're pasta straws. Yes. Did yeah. You, did you order them? No, I haven't yet, but I'm gonna. Okay. Well, and I'm gonna run out of my plastic straws first. <laughs> Excuse me. You guys can't see her, but she's like burning lasers <laughs> at me with her eyes. <laughs> That's because in the U.S. alone, it is recorded by straw manufacturers that 500 million straws are used per day. Dang. Per day. Did you hear that number? I mean, accurate. 500 million per day. I know people that will go through, like, four straws and one drink. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> now, before you say anything about paper straws, we're from Florida. And, it, and it, we live in a county, or we live near a county, that has mandated paper straws. Blech. I'm going to be honest. I hate them. I hate them so much. But good news is there's other options. You can get metal, glass, bamboo, or even silicone. And silicone. Or pasta. Oh my gosh. <laughs> silicone ones are my favorite because I can chew on them. Ooh, fair. Sensory. Cool. Yeah. Chew fair. on them silicone straws. Bad news is these mandated paper straws aren't even much better in the long run. Once those straws become used, and I'm betting most of you just toss them in the trash and go about your day. Yeah, absolutely. Because I have. Yeah. Those straws make their way into the landfill to slowly decompose. Close. Decompose. But isn't that better? Like, that they decompose? Yes and no. And I'll tell you why when I get onto landfills. Okay, cool. So, if you don't know what goes on in the landfill. (laughs) That would be me. (laughs) I'm here to tell you. Well, thanks. Of course. (laughs) When landfills get so packed with waste, things are left to decompose anaerobically, which basically means without oxygen. This process then releases methane ga- gas and speeds up climate change. How are they decomposed without oxygen? I thought landfills were just, like, outside. So they are, but once you pack layers on layers on layers, that stuff on the bottom has oh. no room to get any kind of oxygen into it. Wow. So then it's just all kind of decomposing and releasing methane gas. That's super sketch. Yeah. <laughs> So, one of my favorite podcasts, Farming for Dummies, has an episode called Cows, Carbon, and Controversy with Tara Vander Dessen. In this episode, she touches on a controversial topic that no one wants to admit to. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. And I love that she touched on it, so I'm here to reiterate what she said. She talks about cows, obviously. And the first myth is that cows produce methane through farts, which is incorrect. I have never heard that before in my life. A, it's a very popular argument with city people maybe i mean because we live in the country and i've never heard that yeah so it's a very large argument because people well let me just continue actually okay <laughs> <laughs> so it's a myth because cows actually they do produce methane but they produce it through burps oh so i, I mean do- not cute but cute <laughs> I did some further research, and on usdairy.com, Dr. Juan, I couldn't pronounce his last name, so we're going to call him Dr. Juan. Fair. Dr. Juan, with the dairy management, said cows release 97% of all methane gas by burping rather than farting. Unlike people, cows burp without a sound. Oh, make a little dog side burp. (laughs) (laughs) Dr. Juan said that the carbon footprint of the U.S. dairy industry is approximately 2%. Oh, wow. For reference, according to the EPA, when it comes to the United States, nearly 30% comes from transportation. That makes so much sense. So you're going to blame it on these cows when it's really our vehicles. Yeah. But no one wants to admit to that. Well, of course not. Because humans are the problem. Well, and people are freaking lazy. They don't want to walk anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Well, to go on further, Tara says that all ruminant animals, so cows, are a part of the natural biogenic carbon cycle. They have been around for a long time, so it's not new carbon. However, these fossil fuels are new carbon. So everything that we're pulling out from the Earth, that's new to the Earth's atmosphere. Right. <clears throat> we're pulling carbon from deep in the Earth to use as pow- use to power our daily lives, which also produces methane that wasn't originally planned for. 
It's easy to blame others for a problem that we created. That part. <laughs> that freaking part. And why are you blaming the cows? They're 2% of their burps versus your 30% from your car. For real. Mm. Humans are the problem, and I stand by that. <laughs> for a lot of things. Not just freaking. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's another conversation for another day. <laughs> <laughs> but what you can always think about is reduce, reuse, and recycle. And I heard that's that saying, so much in high school. That saying has been around since the 70s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> According to Melanie's research, the NRDC, which is the Natural Resources Defense Council, states that 40% of food in the U.S. goes to waste. Wow. How privileged we are. <laughs> that's so sad. Uh-huh. I mean, think about it. If you don't eat that half of the cheeseburger, you just throw it away. Wow. People do that all the time. They don't finish their chicken nuggets from McDonald's. So instead of saving them, they just throw them away. Wow. You know what? That makes... Yeah. Because there was a TikTok that I watched of this girl and she was like, oh, what'd she say? Um, when parents grow up, tell you you have to finish everything on your plate because there's like kids in Africa. Africa. <laughs> and she's like, me throwing away half my plate isn't going to feed the kids that are in Africa. Like, they're still going to be hungry. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a principle. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> the NRDC also states that the restaurant industry generates 11.4 billion tons of food waste a day. Yeah, so that's another thing. Like, I read, I think I saw it on Facebook. It was like a Facebook article where, um, I don't remember what state or country it was, but w somewhere in the world, there's a country or state that has a law that the food waste from restaurants has to be given to homeless shelters or soup kitchens it sh as or it things like that yeah i think we should have that in florida <laughs> like because otherwise it's just getting thrown away so why not feed people we're that feed need the it? raccoons yeah we're literally feeding the raccoons <laughs> i mean but raccoons are cute <laughs> but there is a way to change those numbers by only ordering what you can eat or bringing your own eco-friendly to-go box and i'm just gonna say i know it sounds like a hassle i don't want to tote around a box everywhere I'm a person who's really bad at leaving stuff in my car, but change needs to be made. At the end of the day, change needs to be ma made. Yeah. And you don't have to, you don't have to do this. It's whatever is easy for you. Right. So that's what I was saying earlier. Like you're at a stage in your life where something like that is sustainable for you. Whereas I'm at a stage in my life that I'm just learning about all of this. So that's not like, I'm not going to just straight up. I'm not carrying around and a reusable to go box i also have severe social anxiety so i would be <laughs> yeah. too terrified to be like please don't put that in your styrofoam box please use mine they'd be like absolutely not and i'd be like okay i'm so sorry <laughs> i didn't ask but you can start slow exactly by just getting Baby like steps. pasta straws or silicone straws or you know and then it cre it takes how many days to create a habit I think it's 21 or 27. 20-something 20 days to create a habit, and then you can move on to the next thing. Exactly. Do you use reusable bags? Do you no. own one? I own Tupperware. No, no, no. A reusable bag. No, I do not have those. Okay. I have a bunch because one day I was just like, done with plastic. <laughs> <laughs> one day a couple years ago. Done with plastic bags, um, reusable bags all the way. Well, this book kind of shocked me. Does it hate them? <laughs> so reusable bags are great to reduce plastic, but did you know that they could also cause harm? To what? You? No, just the world. <laughs> <laughs> the products used to create these bags have a larger impact on water and air pollution, as well as climate change and ozone depletion. How? Because of the way that they're made and the materials used to make them. That's so crazy. Because you know, like the factories with like the little... Um, pipes and they puff, puff all the stuff into the sky yeah you know my mom used to tell me when i was a kid that they're making clouds it was a cloud yes. factory so did mine <laughs> well they were polluting the air yeah <laughs> poisonous clouds <laughs> that's what i hate about like the sustainable or um clean companies they market that something is better for the environment or it's better for you but it actually ends up being worse sometimes there was a show that i watched um a while ago i honestly don't remember the name of it and they talked about there's a company that packages tuna and they say that it's like sustainably caught, like everything is like, you know, down to the wire, supposed to be good. Mm -hmm. And this guy dove into this company and pretty much like exposed everything bad about this company. Like it wasn't actually sustainably caught. It's undercover caught. boss, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, dang, like you, 
like it's so hard to actually try to be less plastic or less bad or have a carbon footprint because literally anything like okay whole foods i bought two glass jars of concentrated cold brew yeah well one jar it's a glass jar with a metal lid so i also repurposed that jar i took the label off right right got all the like sticky glue stuff off of it well my other jar glass bottle plastic lid Mm. and i didn't notice when i bought it so like you know shame on me but Come on, if you're gonna if you're gonna go all the way to make a glass bottle, yeah, so spend the extra fifty cents to make a metal lid. Exactly. So shout out to Chameleon Cold Brew because they did a metal lid. We gotta love it for my coffee company. (laughs) (laughs) So now my little coffee connoisseur over here. (laughs) Did you know that leftover grounds can be used in compost and might even attract more worms? Yeah, I actually did know that. Oh, I did not actually. Really. Really? Yeah, there's I a knew lot of that people. it was good for like plants, like your garden and stuff, but I didn't know it actually attracted worms. You also have to be careful though, because there's a certain kind of coffee brands that actually have like I went into this like whole fitness health kick not too long ago, and one like in the middle of doing some of my research, it was saying that most coffee companies, like modern day coffee companies we have now, use harmful chemicals to oh, preserve really? the coffee. And when you brew the coffee, you're drinking that. Mm -hmm. And so they say to have organic coffee or clean coffee or whatever. You really have to do your work, like your research. It's a lot of work. If you care. Because I'm not going to lie, y'all. Sometimes I just have that Starbucks coffee and I'm like, God's got me. Here comes the chemicals. (laughs) But shout out to Starbucks because they will for free give you a bag of their used um coffee grounds oh i didn't know that mm-hmm. there is like typically a little basket that says hey take some of our coffee grounds it's a pretty good sized bag and it's free and you take it and i mean i've used it and my plants freaking loved it yeah yeah it's really um, good so and then that's another way of ha- like lessening your environmental impact is being farm to table i am selective with growing some stuff i do really good with and some stuff i do really bad with i do really bad with everything which is why i don't have (laughs) i just i did not get the green thumb i didn't either i started honestly with succulents i have a succulent that is so big he's a menace at this point they're so hard to kill though (laughs) i know that's why i started with them yeah but then when you go to normal plants you're like why did this die (laughs) i did really good with okra really good with okra yeah your mini farm is like amazing you had the biggest like what was it peppers no that was my okra that Uh, thing that was super tall yeah that was my okra yeah and he should well all my plants are he's he's a cheese (laughs) i don't know he should come back um when it warms up i cut him down buried him so he's good but i do really want to morph my little personal garden into like a market garden oh cute um so this summer i do plan To get at least five or six more okra plants. Mm -hmm. That way I can provide okra for myself, my neighbors, you know, there's my mom, my friends, like. Go to farmer's markets. Well, I don't know if I'll have that much, but yes. (laughs) (laughs) Think big, think big. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. To make this being farm to table even better, those food scraps that you have when you're cooking, they can be put back into a compost to then make your veggies even happier. Mm -hmm. Happier. Yeah, I know that eggshells are actually, like, really good for compost, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah eggshells are really good for compost. Aren't they, like, good for your dogs, too? Yeah, Murphy eats them all the time. Oh, You don't want to give them too much, though. So, like, raw eggs and eggshells are good for your dog. But if I give Murphy two raw eggs, I only give him one eggshell. See, Dobby has such a sensitive stomach. I gave him a raw egg one time, and he threw up for three days straight. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so I've never given any of my dogs eggs ever again. Well, Murphy loves them. He loves them so much. Now that we've talked about ways to be almost zero waste in our food, let's touch on our home life. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. According to the 2015 EPA records, Americans generate 4.48 pounds of waste per person a day. Jeez. So there's two of you in your house, so that's roughly 10 pounds of waste. A day? A day. That means we have 70 pounds of waste a week. (laughs) Yeah. That can't be right. That's a lot. Like, it's just think about everything. It. Your water. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm like, dang. But you can limit some of these by making your own cleaning solution, which I know you've done. Yeah. Okay. I'm so excited because Sam has been. Okay, y'all. Sam is, like, really big into making her own laundry detergent. 
and, and dishwasher pods because of how excited she gets about it i was like well let me try to make something but i want to make something that she hasn't made because i want us to benefit from each other making things so i can give her what i've made and she can give me what she's made and we can swap and then we have everything we need so i made floor cleaner i was so excited <laughs> and i texted her immediately and i was like look at this because the water was so dirty afterwards yeah. my floors have never been so clean and that's sad yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, for some simple cleaning solutions, you can take a glass bottle. You can add some water, some white vinegar, and a couple drops of lemon essential oil. Tracy loves lemon. And then you have a simple, like, antibacterial cleaner. All-purpose cleaner? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for, like, a paste that you could use, well, you couldn't use it on your stove, but, like, glass top stoves and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you can just mix water. I have a gas stove, y'all. That's why she said that. <laughs> <laughs> you can just mix water, baking soda, and you're good to go. So. I bet that would get up, like, all the oil and stuff. Because baking soda cuts, cuts it cuts through some stuff, y'all. Also, I just want to say, this is total sidetrack. I saw a tweet the other day by this <laughs> lady. We'll say that. Um, and she was just, like, pretty much saying, like, if y'all ever see me, like, allowing my kids to eat off, like, a gas stove, like, stop me or some what? shit. And I was just like, ma'am. Why? You ate off a gas stove at some point. Because it's gas. I don't understand. All, like, the gas chemicals or whatever. I don't know. Whatever goes through these certain people's brains that they're just like, I'm not going to let my kids play in the dirt or drink from the hose. Well, you know what? When she runs out of electricity because there's a storm power outage <laughs> and she can't cook on her stove, but I can, then what? Exactly. <laughs> Getting back on topic, though. <laughs> So before you go to grab that paper towel to wipe down that cleaning solution, try using a cloth instead. And oh, true. We talked about this because mm -hmm. um, we both said that we wanted to get in the habit of yes, the, um, like, reusable paper towels. Uh -huh, the like unpaper paper towels. Yeah. And before you grab those Ziploc bags, think about switching to a silicone bag. Or you can be like me and try beeswax wraps and fail horribly. I was going to ask you how they, it went, because I didn't hear anything else about them. They didn't fail. I just need to fix them. So We what put happened? too much of the mixture on them. Uh, so they're like, there's they like set. clumps of beeswax. There's too much on yeah, there. Yeah, they didn't So set, I right. just need to throw them in the oven and melt the beeswax down and then so it's thin enough. Yeah. But you can melt the beeswax down and then put another sheet on top of it to soak up the mm -hmm. extra. Yeah. Now, a fun fact about me that Cheyenne briefly touched on already. I am highly allergic to gain laundry detergent mm -hmm. so allergic that i had to go to the hospital literally like <laughs> almost died yeah that was not fun about a month ago i was using tide free and clear and they come in those big plastic containers and in order to recycle them you have to completely clean them out and make sure that they're dried that's annoying yeah especially because it's soap yeah so you know how many times you have to rinse that out <laughs> exactly. especially because it's concentrated and then you're wasting water no it's not it it's concentrated, not concentrated soap Laundry detergent is laundry liquid laundry detergent is like eighty percent water. What? Mind blown. Wow, I really need to read the back of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I always and thought it was concentrated. Heck no. <laughs> Did you know that one unclean item can cause a whole clump of recyclables to be dumped in the landfill? What? Mm -hmm. Just one item that wasn't rinsed out and dried all the way can cause a whole trash cans worth to go into the landfill instead of being recycled why i feel like that would still be better than it not being clean like a little that's bit dirty is better just than the rules uh -huh. that's so dumb so while i was reading this book i did a little bit of research of course you did <laughs> <laughs> there is a website called earth911.com oh cute which is so perfect because i used to be a dispatcher <laughs> so on this website which is actually mentioned in the book if you're unsure of how to recycle a certain item or where to recycle it, this website will tell you how. You just put in your zip code and what you're trying to recycle. Oh, that's cute. And also, this is not a sponsored ad. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to sponsor us, <laughs> email us at lifeinthelibrary.podcast at gmail.com. Exactly. So like Cheyenne said, I made my own and I switched to powder detergent. And it smells so good, you guys. Yeah, I make a couple different scents try to profit off of it a little bit mm -hmm. but it's cheaper in the long run and like Ryan said i can add whatever scent i want because it's all essential oils so if you're interested i won't gatekeep and we'll put the 
recipe in the description. Now, Shout out to Sam for being so nice because most influencers or blog or podcasters or whatever will not tell you their secrets. Oh, no. I don't get everybody's going green. Everybody's going <laughs> freaking green. But, it, I mean, like you said, it is so much cheaper. Like I mean, for 50 bucks, I'm pretty sure I made enough laundry detergent to last me a year. Whereas the jug of like laundry detergent, which is 80% water. is like 30 bucks. Yeah, but it also only lasts me like a month. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ours is like 30 bucks, and we go through it in like a month and a half, two months. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to shock you. Oh, no. Well, this might not be true in your house. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but the most non-eco-friendly room in your house, can you guess what it is? The bathroom? Wow! Yeah! <laughs> Look at me. Do you know why? Nope. <laughs> well, we were on a roll. All right, I'm going to tell you why. Are you ready? Oh, no, I'm scared. Plastic shower curtains. Ooh. Plastic shower containers like your shampoo, conditioner, body wash, razors, hairbrush, toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, you name it. Everything. Everything's plastic. <laughs> Everything. It's so true. You want to know how to change that, though? <laughs> no. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. Too bad. It is a lot of work. But some of the best ways are to switch to bar shampoo, conditioner, and soap. I will say bar soap is hard for me because I have eczema and it dries out my skin really bad. Mm. I really do want to try bar shampoo and bar conditioner. So I don't know because of my hair if I could do bar shampoo and bar conditioner, but I will say that there are some companies out there who have glass bottles or recycled mm -hmm. plastic bottles. So... Have you ever heard of Lush, the company? Mm, mm -mm. So we don't have one here, unfortunately. We had a pop-up one, so Boo Gainesville, bring it back. Oh, wait. Is that the bathroom store? Like, with the bath yes. bombs? Yes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're I about. I love them. First of all. I didn't know they closed. They were pop-ups, so they were only here for a couple months. That's annoying. But they are so amazing for people with sensitive skin or skin problems like me. Um, they're all like a lot of them are vegan. They're handmade. Aren't they? They have um, they have shampoo bars. That's what I and was conditioner say. bars. Yeah, yeah. But they have a bunch of different ones because I was looking while I was reading this book. I was determined to buy everything that I was talking about and give a review on it. But I oh kind of gosh. fell short. Do you know how long this episode would have been? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I still plan to though. You know, once I get through everything that I currently have. Oh, right. I do just want to throw in there that I went to cosmetology school, so I know a little bit about hair stuff. And anybody that's, like, looking to make their first little baby steps into this pool of sustainability, there is a company out there called Amica, and they literally have a sustainability pledge, which is what I use. I use their products because yeah, me too. Um, they pledge to be sustainable. They use up to 90% post-consumer recycled plastic in their bottles nice. um, they use 65 percent energy saving in their production process so they really do try they package with a purpose meaning that they use pcr plastic refillable pouches so you buy their bottles once but if you need to refill their bottles you just buy their like refill kit um, and that's who i use oh that's pretty cool yeah well, so, like, that's another good alternative option Yeah. also. Yeah. But I do really want to try it just to see if, you know. Yeah, but that's, again, that goes back to what I was talking about. You're at a different point in this journey than yeah. I am. I'm starting. You've been in this for, what, months now? Yeah. Um. So, for me, like, that's the baby splash into that pool that oh, I absolutely. need. And then another thing, which I don't know if you use one of these, but have you ever used a coffee scrub before? So I don't use coffee scrub, but I do use body scrub. No, that's fine. Don't use coffee scrub. They're actually oh, really okay. bad for your drain. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, she's going to yell at me for using No, it. <laughs> no, no. Sugar scrubs, like sticking to sugar scrubs is so much better than a coffee scrub or um, what's that one company? Is it Clean and Clear? They make the face wash. That's an acne. Are you talking about Neutrogena? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. So you know how they have those morning burst beads? Oh, yeah. They're plastic. Oh. Uh no, shut Stay up. Stay away from them. Oh, my God. No, that's right, though, because I did see somebody ended up going to, like, the hospital or something. they got stuck in their eyeball? Yes. Yeah, they're plastic. 
they're bad oh my gosh that makes sense though that sugar scrubs would be good because if you take hot showers it melts it yeah exactly yeah i could see that cheyenne do you have a loofah in your shower why are you calling me out but yes i do throw it away i do want to um actually buy a loofah plant though Ooh, me too i want to grow them so bad yeah okay but throw that one away it's synthetic and it's literally right now hanging in your shower growing mold ew get a washcloth or be like me and just use your hands washcloths use they they harbor bacteria too though yeah you use it you wash it you use it again fair man or just be like me on the hand van (laughs) that's how that's how tracy is yeah that's how i was raised washcloths are weird Lufa's bad. Oh. <laughs> You're just tearing my life apart right now. <laughs> You're welcome. Now that plastic toothbrush you have. So I actually don't know if my toothbrush is plastic. Oh, toothbrush is plastic. Oh. Okay. But there is an alternative. But the alternative would be great for you for now as your baby alternative. But the alternative to the alternative is the better option. I thought the – I thought – don't they have bamboo – Yes, but the little thing about bamboo toothbrushes, uh uh-uh. oh, um, they are. Well, you might think that they're entirely compostable. They're not. But it's a plant. Mm, but are those bristles a plant? Mm. They're nylon. So the the toothbrushes we brush our teeth with are nylon. The bristles on the bamboo are nylon. So in order to compost that toothbrush, you have to pluck out every single i am not doing that right (laughs) so i'm gonna gross you out a little bit really oh my god please don't i'm gonna throw up but i (laughs) but i did some research so the best toothbrush out there is going to be one that has a wooden handle and boar hair bristles oh that's not gross so men use boar hair brushes for their beards okay so you just toss those those in the fire pit afterwards the boar head the whole thing the whole toothbrush fire pit done and that's okay for the environment. Oh. Uh-huh. It doesn't get off, like, toxic fumes or anything? No, because it's wood mm. and hair. Look at that. <laughs> I'm just going to go outside and burn my toothbrush. I'll be right back. <laughs> and so, just so we are clear, it really is boar hair. It's just harvested from a special breed of boar and boiled for a straighter, more hygienic bristle. I wonder if, like, when you're using plastic toothbrushes that you get from, like, Walmart or something, the bristles that are on those... Those are probably nylon, too. Yeah, but they're coated in a coating that keeps them from getting nasty. And I wonder if that coating wears off over time in your mouth and you're swallowing that toxic chemical. Probably. That's so scary. My mom... Okay, hang on, guys. (laughs) Completely kind of off topic, but not really. My mom's in the medical field. She's a PED nurse coordinator. And she told me for the first time in history, scientists have discovered a certain percentage of plastic inside of human blood. Oh, my God. See? Go green. Inside of our blood. So some of us are literally walking around with plastic in our blood that our body has just learned to accommodate because we've been, like, exposing ourselves to Mm -hmm. it for so long. Well, since you said that. I was really caught off guard when I had to go to the hospital from my laundry detergent reaction. And the hospital gave me, like, a three-in-one steroid shot. And they're like, this will, like, bring down your swelling because my entire face was swollen. I was covered in hives. But they're like, it all may come back in two weeks. And it did. In two weeks, I was covered in hives all over again. So I went to the doctor. And she told me that I still had laundry detergent in my bloodstream. What happened was I was going to my friend's house, and I didn't know she used it, and I was using her blanket, sitting on her furniture. I laid on her bed, and that's how my face got swollen. But in, what, a two- to three-week span, it was still in my bloodstream. Mm, That's so sketch. That's so gross. It just makes you wonder how many other (laughs) chemicals are are in our blood. But, like... Why, why though? Like, why, you know these chemicals are bad. Just like dyes are bad for you. Like, um, I think it's like red 40. (laughs) All right, toothpaste and floss. Both full of plastic. Well, yeah, uh, floss is literally coated in plastic. Uh So you could think about switching to tooth tabs, which is literally just like a tab of toothpaste and you chew it. And then I've seen those. Yeah. Or powder. And I will say that I have used powder before. Powdered toothpaste? Yeah. So it's actually pretty freaking neat so i use this charcoal toothpaste powder and i know the charcoal is actually really bad for your teeth 
you know, well, I only used it once. Um, it creates micro fractures in your teeth. That sounds painful. <laughs> what you do is you wet your toothbrush and you have your little container and you just dip your toothbrush in and you go. Except for it was charcoal, so it made my entire mouth black. <laughs> <laughs> so, floss, like you said, yeah. coated in plastic. So, there's this stuff called dental lace, which is an alternative. Is it like string? Pretty much. Hmm. Uh, it's Well, it's actually made of silk. Oh, okay. So, um, but I will admit that I am not the best when it comes to flossing. So, oh, floss. you will not I... see me switching to dental lace because I don't even have dental floss in my house. I have to floss. If not, the permanent retainer that I have in my mouth gets so yucky. And I hate the dentist. I'm going to cry. Why? Shout out to my weight loss coach who I told her today at my appointment that I made a, um, what is that called? My mirror. Oh, she made a positive affirmation mirror. Yes, I made a positive affirmation mirror that I stand in front of every morning and I was telling her about it. And she was just like, well, I'll send you affirmations here and there. Aww. She just sent me one. And let's see let's see what she said. Shout out to Cindy. <laughs> she said, Sam is talented. She can grow things, build things, and make things that I have never been brave enough to try. Aww. And she is brave, taking on road trips with just her and her companion, Murphy. Oh, my gosh. So... Cue some kind of music while I go cry really quick. <laughs> Baby violin. <laughs> I need a Cindy. What the heck? <laughs> All right, let's get back on topic. Aw. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy, for taking care of my friend. <laughs> so, Cheyenne, do you shop online? No. Don't lie to me. I hate. Are you talking about like for clothes? No, I just mean in general. The only thing I shop online is like Amazon. Okay, but you shop online, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Do you shop sustainably? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Just by doing a little research, you can find companies that use sustainable shipping practices like Lush and even Samsung, which shocked me. Tracy's going to love that. <laughs> He's going to be like, wow, Android superior. <laughs> <laughs> now, my second to last tip, which I have been hardcore on. Shine, you want to take a guess at what it is? Mm -hmm. No. Opting out of receipts. I didn't know you were doing that. I was wondering why you stopped getting receipts. So I am a, or I was, an avid receipt scanner because I wanted my points. Yes. Fetch was, me and Fetch, the little app, were besties. I was scanning everybody's receipt. Well, little to my knowledge, receipts are coated with a chemical called BPA. Oh, that's not good. This is an endocrine or endocrine. Endocrine. I don't know. Okay. It's a disrupting chemical that plays a role in female and male infertility, yep. early puberty, and breast and prostate cancer. All that just from handling this small coated piece of paper. Yep. So just don't take that receipt or take an e-receipt. Unfortunately, I did know about that because there are also some bras and like underwear that have BPA like stuff in it. There's a doctor on TikTok that talks about it and talks about how... Um, they went from seeing like early puberty at the age of like 14 to now they're seeing young females hit puberty at the age of like 12. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, finally, one of the best ways to be almost zero waste. And I love this one because it was the last tip in this book. But it also plays so well into our podcast. Oh, no. One of the last or one of the best ways to be almost zero waste in your community is to visit your local library. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And always remember that doing one good thing is better than doing nothing at all. Right. That's my motto. <laughs> and that closes the almost zero waste guide. I'm so happy that it said the library. I know. I was just like. Wow, how fitting that our first po like our first book episode yeah. is not only something I'm passionate about, passionate about, but the end of the book is just like, go to the library. Yeah, for real. I was how just fitting. like, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Is there anything else you want to talk about while we're on here? Just to talk about, hang out with our friends? Because we don't have friends in real life. <laughs> <laughs> we really don't. It's so hard, actually. Cheyenne is like my person that I text morning to night every I single day know. except for when she sleeps all day 
so it's really hard to be like, oh, let me not tell her about the book I'm reading because we've got to talk about it next week. Yeah, well, and not only that, but we've also been trying to not talk as much throughout the week so that we can have natural forming conversations about our everyday life on the podcast. We can ask how each other's week went, but I already know. Actually, <laughs> Cheyenne, where are you working? Oh, I'm working at Joel's Coffee House. Whoop, whoop. That's new. No, there's new. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm working there part time um, because obviously I love coffee. And I needed to do something for my mental health, honestly. Um, before that, I was a nail tech, and that industry, the cosmetology beauty industry, is just honestly so toxic and vile. Um, it can really take a toll on your mental health. I know a cosmetologist who had to step back out of the salon environment just because the girls were so catty and there was bullying, and it's just, it's really not good. Um, and as you guys know, coffee is everything not everything to me jesus is first but <laughs> coffee is definitely second um and it just brings me a lot of joy to be able to serve people a cup of coffee that wakes them up in the morning and the owners are really nice it's a family-owned um company so it's not corporate like starbucks or duncan and it's, it's i love it it's been great for my mental health i will say before before i decided to start um or we start before I decided to fast coffee. I did start going to Dunkin' more often. Yeah. Yeah. It's just cheaper. It is cheaper. And honestly, the customer service that you get at Dunkin' versus the customer service you get at Starbucks is different. Also, their avocado toast is superior. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think Starbucks has avocado toast, does they it? Don't. Yeah. 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 I think they used to, but I don't think they do anymore. I love Dunkin's... Um, valentine's day drinks they have a pink macchiato or something mm -hmm. and i am so happy mm, that's probably has red 40 in it which is so bad for you it probably does but i'm almost oh. off my fast and i cannot wait <laughs> cannot wait mm. i will say uh we're not super hippy dippy <laughs> sam is more hippy dippy than i am <laughs> but we're definitely not gonna push um Sam might. Let me let me backtrack a little. I will push a little more heavily, but if you don't want to, that's fine. You can kill the planet, I guess. She's not going to hate you and be like, you yes, have to be a vegan, and I'm not going to talk to you because bleh. <laughs> you don't have to be a vegan, because that is one thing that I could never be. I could not be a vegan. I mean, shout out to all the vegans. Yeah, but for like, real, because that is some dedication. There is no way that I could, but I mean... We do want to do little things here and there to better our environment and to make sure that the earth is not going to die and we won't have a place to live. <laughs> exactly. Cheyenne and I call it hippie woo-woo. Yeah, <laughs> it's our hippie woo-woo stuff. <laughs> and we don't mean that to be negative, but literally it makes me happy, so woo-woo. <laughs> and, and like growing up, being called like a tree hugger or a hippie was such a bad thing, but honestly... Them hippies are living life, man. <laughs> they have no cares in the world. For I want to be like that. For so me growing up, woo-woo was always like, somebody's a little cuckoo. Like, woo-woo. <laughs> I am crazy, so it's okay. So, I mean, we all are crazy in some ways. <laughs> Literally. Anyway, um, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Actually, before you wrap things up. Oh, okay. I do want to say, I forgot. It just came back to me. I do want to be that person for a minute. But Cheyenne's horrible at coming up with names. Names for? I had to come up with her Instagram Oh, name. yeah, yeah. I have an Instagram now. And I'm with, I, I want to tell Sam anybody. came up with my name. Let me rephrase. We were on the phone very late at night again. <laughs> this Deliriously. is our normal. It was only 1030. Deli that's late. That's true. Deliriously trying to brainstorm social media names for me because i broke her and now that we have the podcast she wants to come back on social media so i had to sit here and think of all these names so if you would all be so kind to do the honors <laughs> and go follow my best friend the caffeinated christian on instagram <laughs> and so cute and twitter and tiktok oh and tiktok wow she's yep, really yep, stepping yep, out there yep. i listen i have a love-hate relationship with social media because social media can be such a horrible place for your mental health, for yes. um, especially people with body dysmorphia or any kind of 
you were preaching to the choir over yeah here. like it can just be so toxic and um as a christian the things that i see on social media hurt my heart like they're just they're not nice things um so are nasty especially when they can hide behind a keyboard yeah keyboard warriors is what i call it mm-hmm. they it's just insane and i love you i love you if you're a keyboard warrior because i'm called to love you but that doesn't mean that i want to see it yeah so i took a break from it and i don't blame you but yep go check out the caffeinated christian and if you subscribe see to our podcast if you want to see cheyenne <laughs> You can come check me out, the outlawed homesteader. Yes. Because I'm a nerd. Actually, no, Cheyenne's the nerd. I'm just the hippie. <laughs> also, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, Life in the Library, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, we cannot wait for everyone to start following us, and we get to kind of stalk you guys and see what kind of followers we have <laughs> oh my god we're not that creepy but we would love to interact with you guys yeah we're definitely not those people that are like you're gonna comment on our stuff and you're never gonna get a reply like i think our first trailer episode somebody commented and we definitely responded right back to them and also give us feedback because we've never done this before we don't know what the heck we're doing so yeah definitely if you think that we should alter something tell us like we may not listen to it right away but we'll at least take it into consideration yeah and that's it for episode three. Yeah, it was nice talking to you guys. Thank you, Big Daddy Unlimited, for partnering with us on this podcast. Until next time, bye.